Chapter 6. Digging My Own Grave My daughter stitched me up and apologized because she had to leave. We argued for about 30 minutes on whether or not I should leave, and I still refused. Despite everything that went on, even the head wound I incurred, I needed to see this through to the end. I needed to know if Bradley or my father was the killer. So who better to ask than the man himself? The next day, I placed a call to the state prison he was staying in, and after a while, he was put through. I was reminded multiple times that the phone calls were recorded. Hello, he asked with a flat inflection. It was almost as though he knew I would call. The disappointment in his voice was very thick, and almost had a sound of resignation in it, like he'd given up on life. I swallowed hard. Hi, Daddy, I said. It's Sam. I stumbled on my own name, and when it came out, it sounded foreign, almost as though someone else spoke those words. Sam, he said slowly. Samantha Kane. You're finally talking to your old man after all these years. Not that I didn't have a reason to, I said. I'm calling from my childhood home, the place where you raised me in Loeb, Texas. Why would you go back there, he asked. To prove my innocence? Guilt. I'm already serving over four consecutive life sentences because I had to clean up a mess that wasn't mine to begin with. Care to refresh my memory? I asked, summoning a more professional, stern tone like a bitch with some backbone. No! He yelled. I've done enough for you. I love you kids. I know I never said it and barely showed it, but what you did ruined everybody's life. And Bradley couldn't live with the fact his father had to make a couple people disappear to throw the cops off. My ears perked up. Throw the cops off? From what? You were there. You saw everything. You came home with the 22 in your hands and Bradley hid it in the closet. You two washed the blood off and I walked in on you. Don't you remember any of this? Or are you trying to stir up some more drama? Because I got dirt, Sam. I could put you in here with me. It's all there in that house. You were the trigger man chuckled darkly. I was at a complete loss for words. You are the original low ripper, Samantha. My blood ran cold as ice, and I went completely numb. You're lying, I snapped and stood. Fuck you, you cold-blooded son of a bitch. Hope you die in there. <laughs> we both know I ain't going nowhere, he said with a chuckle. I read your books in here, Sam. They're terrible. Total and absolute garbage. You're a nobody. You belong in a place like this. I don't know how you didn't end up in jail sooner. A no-talent crippled alcoholic with no family. <laughs> I wish I found you in that closet instead of Bradley. I clenched my free hand and heaved angrily. Once again, the words, Fuck. You. This time they came out separately the rage seeping from every breath that carried those words. Now get on out of that rickety old house and go back home before you remember something that'll put you in here with me. That's the last time I'll ever help you, Sam. Get. The. Hell. Out. With that, Dad hung up on me. Sitting at the kitchen table still, I buried my face in my hands. What exactly happened? Was he even telling the truth? Absolutely not. I never killed anyone in my whole life. How could I? And wouldn't there be evidence implicating me? And if Dad was the one who killed some of the people, why in the hell did Bradley hang himself? I was more puzzled than ever. I had recorded the entire phone call on my end with a pocket tape recorder and rewound the tape to listen back. The sound of my dad's voice brought back all of those nights where he got drunk and argued with Mom before he beat us. I went back and looked at the rifle. I was by no means a forensic scientist, but I understood enough about rifling and how bullets twist and leave markings. I went outside to the little girl's grave and disturbed it one last time to see if I could retrieve the bullet, and bingo. A slug was found among the dirt. I covered her back up and went inside to see Alex sitting at the table looking in confusion at the rifle. Should I be worried? He asked. Depends on who you think I'm going to use it on, or did, I said. You think you killed those people? Alex gasped in surprise. Dad says so, I reasoned, checking the chamber to see if it was loaded. There was one round left in the magazine of the little twenty-two hunting rifle. 
It was a lever action Browning that costs a great deal of money nowadays, but back then was a dime a dozen. I went to the bathroom and filled the tub with water. You sure you know what you're doing? He asked. Got a microscope? I asked and I chambered the round. Do I look like a scientist? He returned with an eye roll. I just want to test fire this bullet to confirm they came from the same rifle. You can do that by eyeballing them, he said. They're both 22 long rifles, so what if they came from the same gun? That doesn't prove you or your dad was a shooter. And I doubt fingerprints would still be on the rifle, let alone theirs, since you've been handling it. My shoulders slumped. He was right. Well, what the hell am I doing then? You tell me, he snapped. But I know one way you could find out who shot the round. Find the casing. How would you know? Let me ask you this. Do you know for sure, 100%, you didn't handle that rifle? I would remember if I killed anyone. You don't really block something like that out. Maybe. There was a creak in the attic. Alex turned his head and yelled, Shut up! Before returning his eyes to me. Maybe if you go to where the casing is, you might remember something. If you weren't there, there won't be a memory. But if you go there and you remember something, you'll at least know for sure. I nodded and drained the tub. Good thing I didn't go through with this. Imagine the hole I would have put in the porcelain. You would have if I didn't show up, he posited. It was true. I would have flooded the house. I took a trip to the backyard while the sun was at its brightest and looked for a casing. I was on my hands and knees in the Texas heat for hours on end and didn't find a casing anywhere. Not in the sides or the front of the house either. I did find a really cool old sign from when I was a little girl that said, Trespassers will be shot, although it was just a scare city folk. No one was ever shot just for walking onto our property. And we had solicitors ranging from Jehovah's Witnesses to illegal Mexican immigrants asking for work, darkening our door. We didn't like outsiders, particularly Daddy. If there was one thing he taught us, it was to never trust a stranger. Hell, I have acquaintances I wouldn't trust with a glass of cold lemonade in the summer heat. After going back inside, I summoned the guts to go back into the attic alone. Alex was doing whatever he does, and I decided I would get answers from the source, or die trying. I pulled down the attic ladder with that stick, took a deep breath, and climbed up. Halfway up, I heard sobbing. <laughs> Sarah? I called. Look, I'm sorry, honey. I'm coming up to listen to you. Whatever happened between us, I want you to know I'm sorry, and I want to help. The sobbing suddenly stopped. Sarah? I stuck my head into the attic and used a flashlight in my cardigan pocket to look around. It may be hot as hell outside, but I run cold. The entire attic was empty. Sarah, it's me. Sam. Samantha Kane. Have we met? Silence was the only reply given. As I climbed all the way up into the attic, I expected the ladder and door to retract like last time, but they didn't. Like I said, I don't want to talk. I just want to listen. Could you tell me who did this to you? A long, empty lull followed my words, and then I got impatient. Must torque you off being dead in a stinky attic, huh? What are you crying about? Boyfriend trouble? You got a C in algebra? I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to live either after that. You trust fun daddy probably cut you off for fooling around in school, am I right? Answer me! <laughs> I heard a giggle from the shadows behind me and turned to face it. The attic had no windows and the only light aside from my flashlight was a square of luminescence emanating from the ladder doorway thingy. The attic hole, if you will. Don't you piss me off! I snapped to the shadows. I ain't afraid of you like I was last time. I want answers, and by God, you're gonna talk, bitch. Silence again. And once I opened my mouth again to aggravate her more, I heard a faint whisper almost directly in my ear. Make a wish. I turned and expected her to be standing behind me, but instead saw her dangling upside down from a rafter nearby. And when I faced her, I saw the hole in her throat again, and her dead gray eyes in the liver mortis complexion. Her mouth was full of blood-stained teeth, and her tongue was black as coal. The scream I heard from her dazed and terrified me so badly, I stumbled backward out of the attic, missing the steps and fell square on my back, knocking the wind out of me. I saw her crawling out of the hole in the ceiling, sticking to the ceiling and going down the wall like some insect. She twitched and convulsed with an eerie, inhuman rhythm that frightened more than it disturbed me. 
This thing was no longer the girl who she used to be. She was a monster. I crawled backwards on my elbows and dragged my legs, sucking for air the entire time as I locked my eyes on her. She reached the floor and crawled after me with that same jerky movement, the likes of which I don't think any living human could replicate. She crawled directly on top of me and put a throat wound an inch away from my face. I then heard sounds from it that I will not soon forget. Pleas for her life and screaming cut short by a gunshot and a sputtering, gurgling noise as she choked on her own blood. Oh my God, I gasped. The door to my room opened and then the little girl Amanda came out. As she walked towards me, I heard echoes of the gunshot that took her life played over and over. They were trying to tell me something, and I got the message. I'm sorry, I screamed and turned onto my belly. I shielded my head with my arms. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All at once, the sounds died off. I waited a while before looking around and then flipping onto my back. I saw this attic door still opened and the ladder down. My flashlight was in the ground where I dropped it. I heard a door slam and Alex ran up the stairs. You all right, Sam? I sat up and looked down both sides of the hallway. I'm okay, I guess, I said with a heavy tremble in my voice. I figured out what happened and, and I don't like it. Alex emerged at the top of the stairs. What do you mean? It means that I started it. I did it. Those words were hard to utter, but I choked them out. Alex stared at me in utter disbelief, but we both made it down to the parlor.